Welcome viewers to this series of lectures on the origins of Harappan civilization and we have already embarked on our journey to understand the arguments offered in favor of the proposition that Harappan civilization uh, mainly uh, originated on account of uh, local factors, on account of factors that were uh, already in operation, that were already evident in the preceding cultures prior to the emergence of the civilizational stage of Harappa. That is, uh, say from around uh, 2500 BCE uh, onwards, uh, which is regarded as the mature phase of Harappan civilization, what we have discussed already is that prior to this, uh, several thousand years prior, prior to this, almost as early as 7000 BCE, uh, we already had Mehargarh as a site uh, in what subsequently went on to become part of Harappan area, Harappan civilizational area. So, Mehargarh uh, right from 7000 BCE continuously almost up to the 4th uh, millennia BCE, uh, it, it uh, keeps giving us evidence of uh, habitation uh, in the Neolithic stage and uh, prior to the emergence of the civilizational stage of Harappa, we have uh, several other Neolithic cultures originating and flourishing in this area. And uh, this gives, uh, this gives uh, credence to the local uh, argument or uh, local origin argument of Harappan civilization that uh, formative uh, influences uh, of Harappan civilization actually were uh, disseminated, where uh, the, the impulses were local in character because they uh, had already uh, quite a few uh, characteristic features of Harappan civilization had, had, had already been anticipated in these uh, Neolithic uh, or early Harappan or pre-Harappan Neolithic complexes in the same area. And there is fair degree of uh, uh, cultural uh, homogeneity that can be seen. There is a fair degree of uh, anticipation with respect to the subsistence pattern, most of the crops that were consumed by the Harappans in the mature uh, period uh, had already, uh, already been uh, started to be cultivated uh, during the Neolithic uh, period uh, in the same area. Some, uh, quite a few of the animals, domesticated animals had already uh, been uh, domesticated uh, in the uh, preceding uh, uh, Neolithic cultures and so forth. So, uh, basically this is what we have discussed so far in the earlier interaction that I had with you on this topic. Also, we discussed about the geography of Mehergarh, we discussed about uh, how it serves as a good ecotone uh, in the sense that it is right at the confluence of two contrasting kinds of, uh, of uh, climatic conditions as well as uh, terrain wise that is uh, geography. If you look at the landscape right to the west of Mehargarh will be the terminal point of or the eastern terminal of uh, the Indo-Iranian plateau and to the east of Mehargarh we have the, uh, the uh, Indus plain. Similarly, to the west of uh, Mehargarh is the eastern terminal of Mediterranean type of climate and uh, Mehargarh also happens to be the western terminal almost uh, this area happens to be the western terminal of the monsoon type of climate and we have earlier discussed that what are the advantages of uh, being at such a location uh, in the sense that uh, this area despite being a semi-arid area uh, could receive little bit of rainfall even in the winter season due to its proximity to Mediterranean type of climate and of course uh, the monsoon type of climate would uh, give it uh, some bit of rain uh, although very sparse but uh, some bit of rain in the summer season. So, uh, that way it is a good area to, uh, to, to uh, for, for something new to emerge because it is at the confluence of contrasting climatic conditions, contrasting terrain and this could have fostered 
uh, interaction of people, uh, basically animal herders living in the uh, Plato area, Iranian Plato area, who would come down uh, with their sheep and goat uh, during uh, the winter months to uh, graze their uh, graze their uh, cattle, uh, graze their sheep, and uh, that could have been the occasion when uh, two communities living uh, in the plain area and the hilly areas could end up uh, could end up exchanging items uh, as part of barter or as part of customary exchange or whatever we don't know the details of these things there are more studies required to be carried out to uh, elicit more information regarding all these activities but uh, it it uh, offered mehrgar offers itself as a very good candidate uh, uh, to have to have seen all these and to have led to a kind of uh, uh, lifestyle a kind of uh, subsistence pattern uh, subsistence uh, ways and means uh, which could have uh, which could have been little different from the usual uh, uh, animal herders living in the uh, indo-iranian plateau for a long period of time uh, and all these things could have led to a new way of life that we understand as neolithic uh, in this area uh, settled culti- settled uh, 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 life uh, with uh, uh, sun dried brick built houses uh, and uh, several other attributes that we have earlier discussed now uh, this was just a kind of a recap to uh, to accord some bit of uh, linearity or connect with what we have already discussed so far and the present set of two discussions that we have today will try to build uh, on uh, what we have already discussed so far remember uh, this is not all about uh, the origin of Harappan civilization because uh, quite a few arguments uh, are offered with respect to external factors being uh, the trigger point of uh, the civilizational impulses in Harappan uh, case uh, that we are not discussing today. There is some room. It is not as if it, it is entirely or 360 degree explained by local factors. There are quite a few uh, gaps in our understanding of as to how it must have developed as a civilization. So, those gaps are the points where we can, uh, we can uh, think in terms of some impulses coming from outside as well uh, and that also we have alluded to in our earlier discussion. So, you do well to refer to our earlier discussion on this theme and then connect uh, with what we are discussing today. Now, uh, as you can see on your slide, uh, around 3200 to 2600 BCE, uh, there is uh, uh, appearance of three cultures uh, and they are all uh, Neolithic cultures uh, emerging uh, or uh, coming up in this area. When I say this area, what it means is uh, uh, is is what went on to become uh, the uh, Indus area subsequently during the mature phase of Harappan civilization. So the coming of uh, coming up of three uh, cultures together uh, that went on to cover the entire geography that we understand largely as mature Harappan civilization. Those three cultures are Kot Dijian culture, the Sothi Siswal culture and the Amri Nal culture. Now, quote the culture uh, and, and all these three are examples of Neolithic cultures, right? They are all uh, pre-Harappa uh, or you can say uh, early Harappa. Why we are saying early Harappa? Because uh, quite a few attributes are similar to the attributes of mature Harappan civilization. So, that sense of anticipation is very much evident in uh, the attributes of these three cultures. And uh, it is not as if around 2600 BCE or 2500 BCE suddenly something erupted in civilizational form in this area. Uh, fact of the matter is that what went on to become the Harappan civilizational area already was inhabited by uh, Neolithic communities 
uh, and they already had some practices uh, that carried on uh, into the mature phase of Harappan civilization. And they were all of formative character, they were the building base, uh, say in terms of uh, economic activity, in terms of domestication of uh, animals, in terms of cultural homogeneity or cultural practices. So they are very much there. Now this Cordesian culture uh, and, and all these are obviously named uh, after a type site where first evidence of uh, these cultures have been found. So Cordesian culture happens to be the largest inhabited uh, Neolithic patch uh, in this area in uh, what went on to become Harappan civilizational area. And it embraced the entire, uh, say, northwestern frontier province area. So, uh, if you look at the map of uh, Harappan civilization today, northwestern frontier province would be somewhere close to Pakistan-Afghanistan border. And uh, that is the area where uh, Cordesian culture uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, evident uh, or uh, we have... Uh, uh, evidence of Cordesian culture over here, also uh, extending into Punjab and Northern Sindh. So this is the area where uh, from 3200 to 2600 BCE, which is immediately preceding the Harappan civilization, mature Harappan civilization, we have evidence of Cordesian culture. The Sothis Iswal culture uh, covers the area that uh, can be understood with reference to the present uh, denominations that we use, Northern Rajasthan, Punjab and Haryana. This is the area which is the Indian part of uh, Harappan uh, civilization. So, Sothis Iswal culture or Sothis Iswal uh, area is yet uh, another uh, patch where Neolithic developments had already taken place uh, in the period prior to, just prior to the flourishing of the urban phase of Harappan civilization from 3200 to 2600 BCE. And a third of course is the Amari Nal culture and uh, this can be seen uh, in the period uh, 26, uh, 3200 BC to 2600 BCE in the areas that we understand as Baluchistan, Central and Southern Sindh and also uh, parts of Gujarat. So, uh, this is the uh, this is the territorial landscape that we are talking of with reference to three cultures which are early Harappan cultures, Neolithic essentially. Uh, you can uh, even uh, refer to it uh, in terms of Chalcolithic because there is evidence of uh, copper, but it, it is not uh, very extensively used at this stage. These uh, uh, cultures, uh, these uh, three cultures that we are talking of had uh, different pottery traditions, but commonalities are unmistakably present. So, as it usually happens that uh, uh, within a culture, there is some similarity of pottery tradition, pottery making tradition and designs and fabric of the potteries. Uh, we are talking of, uh, of uh, obviously earthen potteries. And uh, uh, there are some commonalities in, uh, uh, in uh, a particular Neolithic community, but uh, since we are talking of three different uh, Neolithic communities, obviously they had little bit of difference, but there also are some similarities. Uh, why we are talking of uh, similarities is because uh, it is only with reference to uniformity of tradition that we can uh, attribute these developments as having anticipated what went on to become Harappan civilization. So, uh, and, and they are all happening in the same area and therefore, local origin, right? So, uh, there also are notable advance uh, uh, that have been made uh, in agriculture uh, uh, with uh, conversion of ox into draught animal, uh, obviously by using the technique of castration and uh, therefore, uh, the, the uh, bulls uh, could be converted into draught animals and uh, they were perhaps used uh, for cultivation purpose. Uh, we have some, uh, some uh, figures that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, attest this. 
We also have some uh, terracotta figurines uh, that attest this. So, and this is this is very uh, proverbial of uh, mature Harappan civilization. So, in mature Harappan civilization, uh, uh, evidence of uh, uh, evidence of oxen driven uh, plow is very much uh, there. It, it's it's uh, it's very usual to find such evidence. And in the pre Harappan Neolithic complex. We already have this practice uh, uh, which was on for several centuries. Similarly, cart ruts in the pre-Indus level at Harappa has been found, uh, cart wheels, uh, cart wheels, cart frames, uh, bulls, uh, terracotta figurines of bulls uh, at Jalilpur has been found. Uh, similarly, use of two wheel uh, ox cart uh, also uh, uh, its evidence has been found in pre-Indus period. So these are some of the uh, some of the examples that uh, that make it that make it evident that what went on to become very usual practice in the mature Harappan civilization was something that uh, was already happening in the pre or early Harappan uh, Neolithic cultures. So, uh, these uh, technological uh, advancements, these uh, pottery traditions, uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, artistic uh, uh, creations that are usually uh, seen in the mature Harappan period had already been uh, in practice in the early Harappan Neolithic complex. Similarly, ox cart, use of oxen to draw the plow, uh, uh, that evidence is also coming from uh, early Harappan or pre-Harappan layers uh, in, in uh, these three uh, Neolithic uh, complexes that we just discussed, Kot Diji, Soti Siswal and so forth. Similarly, uh, from Kalibangan, uh, we have evidence of field which is which obviously must have been agricultural field with furrow marks and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, most probably from early indus uh, levels uh, so uh, when we say early indus levels that means that it is coming from a layer which is prior to 2600 bce so people were living uh, in this area uh, in Kalibangan area and they were doing cultivation with uh, with uh, plowshare right and that is why there are furrow marks right. So uh, using uh, plowshare, using plows driven by oxen and doing uh, agriculture is something which is very much uh, in practice in the early Harappan uh, layers. Uh, of Neolithic. Similarly, Rabi and Kharif crops that we um, understand as uh, uh, winter and uh, summer crops. So, uh, both kind of crops were grown and we have evidence of that coming from early Harappan uh, Neolithic layer. Cotton, when we say cotton, cotton uh, is, is uh, so, uh, so characteristic of Harappa. And uh, in fact, cotton cultivation, uh, the earliest evidence of cotton cultivation comes from Harappan civilization. And uh, cotton cultivation is not something that uh, is characteristic only of uh, mature Harappan period. In fact, cotton started being grown even in the pre-Indus period, right. So, we have evidence of cotton cultivation coming from the pre-Indus layers. Uh, there are ovens at uh, Kalibangan, uh, some historians uh, uh, treat it as, uh, as a sacrificial pit. Uh, this is because uh, sacrifice offering uh, sacrifices at fire pits uh, was a practice, very usual practice in the Vedic period and uh, uh, quite possible that uh, such practices uh, were known to uh, the Harappans and even early uh, Harappan cultures. So, uh, there is, it is not warranted that uh, sacrifices were carried out, but 
there are ovens uh, where uh, either food was cooked or it was used for whatever purpose that usage is not attested to because uh, we do not have access to uh, written sources. In fact, uh, so far we, uh, we, we have not been able to decipher Harappan scripts. So, whatever little uh, specimen of written uh, material we have uh, coming from Harappa, we have not been able to satisfactorily decipher it. So, uh, these aspects, these uh, mental aspects, these uh, emotional aspects or these uh, kinds of religious practices is something uh, that cannot be attested to uh, by, uh, by archaeological sources merely. So, there is a pit there uh, it, it was used for uh, uh, cooking purpose that cooking was uh, as part of uh, sacrifice or whatever that we do not know, but there uh, there is evidence uh, of uh, ovens uh, coming from uh, early Indus phase at Kalibangal. Then uh, wheel made pottery uh, dominates in all the three early Indus culture, so be it Kodijan culture or Sothi Saswal culture and so forth that we just spoke of, wheel made pottery uh, is the predominant uh, kind of pottery that we uh, get to see uh, in all these three early Indus cultures which are Neolithic cultures. And this is and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the importance or significance of wheel made culture is something that we have already discussed uh, uh, in our earlier uh, interaction that uh, once wheel made potteries are uh, are being produced uh, in neolithic complex it uh, it uh, exemplifies that uh, it's cheap and uh, it's democratically available means more and more people must be using these potteries and it is not the exclusive preserve of a few it's not a deluxe pottery that we are talking of Stone was used mainly uh, so far as the uh, tools are concerned and other artifacts are concerned, but copper was also used. So, that is why I said that in these uh, Neolithic, largely Neolithic complexes, it is not as if copper was unknown. So, copper uh, was also used uh, to some extent to a very limited extent. In fact, uh, even for the mature period of Harappan civilization, uh, copper or bronze tools or artifacts are very limited in number uh, in terms of finding. So, it is basically they had uh, they had been perhaps using lithic tools. Uh, it could have been uh, uh, or, or the narrative can be a little different also that uh, those uh, copper uh, used for different artifacts could have been melted uh, to to make something else and and uh, things like that so there is continuity and we don't get it as uh, manufactured item evidence uh, from pre harappa or early harappa or mature harappan period but that's the story uh, at uh, nal and uh, kalibangan in the early indus phase we also get beads of carnelian a gate lapis lazuli uh, and all these are uh, semi precious stones uh, which are uh, not locally available. So, uh, in the Neolithic complexes of which uh, these evidences are a part, uh, these semi precious stones are not uh, locally available. So, how uh, they must have made uh, uh, their way to these sites is uh, on account of uh, long distance exchange. So, uh, wherever they are available, they must have been procured from that place to this place. And uh, what must have been the modus operandi of uh, this exchange, we do not know. Uh, uh, where their institutions uh, which uh, uh, testify to very frequently repeated kind of interaction, we have very little evidence to that effect. And therefore, historians and anthropologists in general agree to the fact that uh, so far as cultures are Neolithic and they have not, uh, they have not uh, made a transition to civilizational stage, uh, it is better to label these uh, exchanges as long distance exchange and uh, not use the term 
trade because trade is about uh, institutionalized, repeated, periodic exchange, uh, perhaps using uh, some, uh, uh, some units of exchange in the form of some currency or something. So, uh, that much we cannot say, but certainly long distance exchange, uh, which could have been customary. Uh, which could have been part of some rituals uh, uh, and not uh, exactly trade or economic in nature, but evidence is there that, uh, that uh, there are items procured from long distance available in the early Harappan layers of Neolithic and uh, again uh, that goes on to uh, to prove the point that uh, even uh, the trade and uh, commerce which is so uh, so characteristic of uh, Harappan civilization uh, actually were uh, making uh, baby steps or were taking baby steps already in the, uh, in the uh, early uh, Harappan Neolithic phase. So, uh, uh, that is it uh, for now and uh, in the next part of the lecture, we shall take the same discussion forward. Thank you.